my YouTube channel. I know I was gone a month, but I'm now back. Back live in action. And I have a new interview with, for you this month with Teak. Spiritual Teak to be exact. Hello, beautiful souls. How are you doing out there? Thank you, Teak, for taking your time out to connect with me virtually so that I could interview you and have you share your business and what you do on my platform. So, T, what is it that you do? Tell us. Oh, beautiful. You know, first of all, I feel like I need to thank you for even having a platform like this, giving businesses an opportunity to share, you know, how they're serving in the world. And I appreciate everything that you're doing out there in the world as well, which is why we're even connected to begin with. I think you have such a beautiful soul. But with thank that being you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> With that being said, uh, my name is Latika, but I go as spiritual teak for very obvious reasons. Um, so teak is short for Latika and I'm spiritual. So thank you, Mama, for that name. <laughs> it was it just made sense, you know, the time that I was really trying to search for a name. She was like, Tea, Tea, spiritual teak. And I'm like, oh, yeah, the light bulb kind of just went off. I was like, yeah, mommy, I can right. Um, so basically, who I am and what I do, I feel like I am, it's, it's two parts to me, but it's merged in one. So I am one. But so I got my daytime gig, um, and then I have my business, which I do, which is holistic practice, where I help people get out of what I would say energetic and physical pain. So people that suffer from a lot of traumas and they hold energy in the body, um, I help relieve that through a number of different modalities, such as like Reiki. Uh, sound therapy, and I do some cross data healing, which some people are familiar with, and some people are not too familiar with. Oh wow! So loads, loads of different things combined into one, but overall holistic healing. Yeah, yeah. It, I like to say holistic healing. It's kind of, you know, what people take words and, and explain what it means to them. So I could say I was a spiritualist, but I don't like to really go there because some people they see that has they attach like a negative connotation to it. Some people don't. Um so I just I say holistic practitioner it feels a lot better for some people. <coughs> I kind of educate them on what it is. You understand what I mean? So yeah some people, you know, they some people are familiar more with Reiki now because it's, it's becoming more open. But to be like a sound therapist, for example, like one of my bowls, people are seeing these bowls, but they're like, oh, but what are the benefits of the bowls? What does that mean? Mm. So, you know, it can go a little bit deeper. So, yeah, I just try to say what it is, the outcome of it. <laughs> the reason why. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So you do that part time, but you also have your daytime, which is separate. Well, you say the word part time, but I feel like uh, both of them are cool. <laughs> yes. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Take that back. <laughs> my life is, um, you know, my mom likes to say, Tika, you know, you've never known how to be still. And I don't think that I ever will. Just as much as I have the day gig, I, I won't I call this a night gig, but I usually do evenings and weekends in my studio. We're now online. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> got times at times. Um, but you know, this is not just traveling, it's just doing things all over the world. So yeah, it's good, it's good. Cool. So I'm gonna give the audience a bit of a background to how we've connected and to, to why I have now invited you to come and to come chat with Simma. Awesome. So um Teak is a friend of a friend that who is now my friend, who is now my sister. <laughs> And um, I went to um, a session um, called Sip and Talk, created by a good friend of mine. And during the session, you know, it's, I guess every session is different. But this specific session I went to, um, there was a lady who was sharing her story. And through this woman sharing her story, um, I felt like it hit me deep you get me i felt like it was, her pain was my pain and the whole room felt it you know i started crying i couldn't stop crying it was crazy and teak was like right let, let everybody step aside <laughs> basically and, and and teak got into action mode 
and basically uh, started to step into her zone where she got her sound bowls out. She, I think before that, you were trying to tap into this young lady's energy and trying to help her heal and release whatever the tension, whatever the trauma was from her. And the whole experience was magical. And as I said, I felt like whatever this, this woman was explaining and, and sharing with us, I felt like it was even, I don't know, I felt like it was a part of me, like her pain was a part of my pain, even though it was nothing compared to what I had ever, ever experienced. And you know, we always say that, you know, we've had a tough, we've had it tough or we've, we've had this. And from hearing what she's been through, I was like, Wow, like boy it's not even that for me it's not even that deep anymore do you know what i mean yeah. um but as teak was healing this young woman i also felt like i was being healed do you know what i mean and for me i was like this is magical even with what my friend is doing this whole sip and talk sessions is magical um and we need to stay in contact. Every woman in this room needs to stay in contact. And literally, that's what it's been. So um, now I do a, um, a Zoom talk every fortnight, every two weeks, called Sister Talks, um, that comes under our Queendom, which is a new venture of mine, guys. Plug, plug. I have to put it out there. <laughs> and... Um, after every session that we do every two weeks, Teak ends the call on um, a guided meditation, which is so beautiful. Every single time uh, the ladies come back to me and they're like, give thanks for Teak, I needed that. I felt like I left and gone to another realm, come back, you know, um, and it's just so that it's, it's falling into place. First of all, it's like, oh, Teak, would you mind doing that? That was the first one. And then, oh, Teak, you're coming back to the second one. And then literally, now, it's just, you know what? Teak, we're working together. Teak's like, sis, I'm, I'm there, I'm there. So, and then the same women that I try to get onto Sister Talks, we join your uh, weekday, Wednesday evening guided meditation as well. So that's how the journey of, you know, mine and Teet's relationship has developed over time. But also, um, I think with what you're doing, this is why I feel like it's important for me to share it because I have never interviewed a spiritual healer oh. um, about, well, I've interviewed a spiritual healer before, but it wasn't, the interview wasn't about the healing services. It was about something else. So I've never interviewed someone about spiritual healing and what they do and what it even entails, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, I give thanks that you are a part of Sister Talks and our Queendom. Um, and yeah, like ladies, if it's something that you're interested in, follow my socials and we can get you involved. But going back to you, T. <laughs> Um, how long have you been a healer for? And to those that may not be familiar with holistic healing, Reiki, sound bowls, um, all of these sort of things, could you also mm, like break it down for us? So first of all, how long have you been doing it for? Yes, ma'am. Um, what was your calling, maybe? Maybe that will explain. Let, you want me jump back of... in time. Let me jump back in time a little for a second. Right. <laughs> so you know what it is. First of all, um, I just wanted to acknowledge what you um, what you brought up, like you know our initial uh, connection, because I just need to say that none of that was actually planned. It's it's all a feeling. It's all like this um, download that comes that. I get this overwhelming feeling like, no, I need to take action. I, this has to happen. Um, mm. In that space where you were, it was, for me, it didn't matter who was in the room. It was like, we're in here with some collective energy. And I have, you know, this beautiful soul over here that is in pain. And I can feel the pain that was in her body. So it's, it's actually unique when you were like, you felt like, you know, you could feel what was happening for her. And 
this is all going to come to answer your question. When it comes to us as a collective, you know, we're all part of the collective consciousness, you know, which is one, one energy. So it don't matter what religion, what walk of life, where you're from, it doesn't matter. I know we're, we live in a world where it seems like all of that stuff does matter. But at the end of the day, we're all spiritual beings having a human experience. So when we yeah. have a deep connection like that, and you were feeling that energy. So that's what I feel in my body. I felt the pain where it was stuck in her body. And then I knew that it was deep. It was really, really, really deep. And I knew that I couldn't, pretty much, I was the vessel that was meant to help her remove that. Because all of us are vessels and things come in different ways. So that goes to, you know, when you ask me, well, how long have I been a healer? Well, the true answer to that question is, is I've always been, um, intuitive hypersensitive you know, or you know somebody might say you know you're really sensitive yeah i am actually sensitive i pick up on people's feelings thoughts and emotions and the and vibration so where someone consciously might be like that's not it and i'm like <laughs> but sometimes it's not it's not for me to tap into someone's journey and kind of force my view or whatever to say this is what you should do no people are guided to me you know what i mean when they're at what part of their journey because things come out in layers so, you know, from being a kid, you know, I'm mean, talking about going back, way back when I was definitely heavily, um, I'm going to say religious, but I'm not going to go there, you know, mm -hmm. um, back, I don't think that type of conversation, but, you know, what I understand and know that there is divine power, this divine energy, I do refer to as God, um, and I appreciate everything out there in the world, that they might have a different name, whoever they you know, practice or don't, etc. But one thing for sure is a collective energy, and I've been feeling that. So you know, um, in knowing that growing up, I'm gonna say in this current situation, um, it was just what it was. It was just so things would happen. I would feel something. I have a dream, or yeah, you know, and all of these things. And I had like secret friends, <laughs> and I have other friends. Friends was obviously my spiritual powwow group. We're going to talk about these things and, and traveling and all of this secret stuff. Where nowadays it's, it's completely out there, but we didn't talk about it back then because they'd be like, Look here, you got some health issues. And actually, no, I, should. I don't. This is, this yeah, <laughs> this is what's happening. Like, I have, I have visions, I see things in the, in the sky, et cetera, et cetera. And it doesn't mean, you know, it's just me. I was tapped in and I'm tapped in now, but more and more people are talking about it. So for me, it's been a, a childhood thing. Um, I've always, I got some stories, I got some, ooh, I got some stories, uh, we would need to like roast some marshmallows or something like that, I need English sweater to get a little better and come off of quarantine, like that. but, <laughs> but it has been since, um, it's been an inner knowing, um, in terms of acceptance to the journey of accepting that this was my calling, that I need to help other people, um, that was a, that was a hard road to accept because I didn't want to do it, I'll be completely honest, I was mm -hmm. going to I got the wrong person. I don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I got the right person. You will do it. Outside. You know, so the more I shake my head, no, the more, I'm going to say challenges, you know, things came, um, you know, obstacles. Because when you're walking in purpose, things seem to be easy. And I, I shouldn't say easy because people might be like, no, they're not easy. But what I mean by that is, is that things seem to flow when you are in your purpose. So when I mm -hmm. accept it, that my divine mission was to be used as a spiritual vessel to help people all over the world. When I accepted that, that's when I felt things going in the flow. Like life still happens, but things began to go in the flow. So then I decided that I was going to, um, as the words you use, begin to help heal people, be that vessel, be that light, to be on the energy. And people might say, well, what, what do you mean by that? Energy from where? Well, the energy is coming from the same place. So I consciously connect to my God, this God, this love, this, these angels, and I say, hey, please heal this person. I set my intention, um, and I channel this energy in, and that's what Reiki is. Reiki means life force energy, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, it was created by the Japanese when you start looking at it like that, you know, but then Reiki is branching off all these different forms. Nowadays, people got, you know, these different names or things, but that's fine. So the truth of the matter is it's source. And when you're tapping into that source energy, that consciousness, and to be true for what you see, man, anybody can tap into that energy. You know, it's just some of us are, you know, you know that old saying, that you don't give too much that you can handle, or God don't give you too much that you can handle. And that's what it is. So I'm yeah. in a state in my life that I'm open to where I can handle all these 
energies and frequencies coming, you know, where somebody else that might be a little bit too much for them. And that's yeah. Cool. So I hope that answered your question. <laughs> yeah, it does. It does. And you know what? Another question I was gonna that you answered was, can anybody tap into that? And you've answered that as well. So yes, thank you. And in terms of your business, your holistic healing business, where is that now? How can people access you? What is it that you are doing and have planned to plans to do? Yeah. My divine mission in life. <laughs> As I said, my, my real, my divine mission in life is to, is to be that vessel. And, but it's not just to be a vessel for individuals. It's to be a vessel for millions of people. Mm -hmm. Millions is really where the goal and the dream is. And if I can tap into billions, that'd be even better. And so, you know, the, the vision or the intention started with, you're going to now do healing work. So I have a physical studio. Um, you know, and then now it's birthed into online, which is what I really wanted to gear the entire business for is because I can reach more people, obviously, online. So when I launched the, the Wednesday Night Calm, that is like a small um, meditation course to my other course that will be coming out in June where um, people will be able to come to a meditation class that lasts a lot longer. We go a bit deeper and they have one-to-one, -one, like once-a-month coaching with me, but... I'll have to give you a little bit about something about that later. But um, yeah. the aim is to, to tap into as many people as possible, to be that vessel, you know, to shine light into people on the journey, whether they're seeking a journey, where they have questions. Because, you know, you and I are on this call, and I believe I may have said this before, you know, what I say out of my voice, I'm going to attract a certain amount of people. You begin to speak, you're going to attract a certain amount of people. So we're, we're both here as light workers, you know. Yes. You may not call yourself a spiritualist or this or that, but you're tapping into people when you speak to them, when you have these events and when you do things, and I'm doing the same. And so, mm. to do that, we got to get out of the comfort zone, and that's what I had to do to reach more people around the world. So, I'm definitely branching online. I, you know, I didn't even mention I do do motivational speaking. Um, I'm, I'm happy to jump on somebody's stage and start speaking because something else happened when I came on stage. It's like this divine light just comes around, and I just be speaking to people's soul, and I'm like, you know what? The vessel was speaking to somebody's soul, somebody soul, but God is moving through. You understand? Know? Yeah. And you know, I just trust the process now. So, I mean, I see myself in that platform. I see myself sharing my story. I got, you know, a book coming out, you know, that's going to be published in August. I got all of my experiences on my spiritual journeys, you know, spirits like, you need to help me and think and stop hiding because you got a lot of things that people would want to know about. And you never know that one or two pieces that it taps into, you can be supporting them on their journey. So don't hide that experience. I'm going to start sharing my experiences, like with ayahuasca, being in Himalayas, um, you know, going to Peru, Machu Picchu. Every year I, I do my best to get with some sort of um, energy healer, uh, you know, guru, shaman, around yeah. to elevate me on that level. So. It's, it's a lot I'm just now I'm just now just I'm walking observing and I'm waiting <laughs> yes have you got a website T? uh yes I do so everything is um underneath spiritual teak um yeah. I I am brand you know Latika she is spiritual teak so that is where it's going to flow whatever I do whether that's the yes. book the, the work the online the speaking on stage so people can reach me on any handle um with the exception of like Twitter and because I, I don't I put that one out. But I have to be honest, you know, you gotta help me. I don't me and social media. We're not best friends yet. <laughs> me do you know what? Twitter for me, I, I I'm not I'm not there. I do have the account um but maybe maybe midway this year I might start trying to utilize it a bit more. So guys follow me on Twitter, you know, and maybe <laughs> maybe that way you know, I don't know. People are like, is you share your thoughts and stuff? I'm like, I don't know. I don't really know if I'm feeling, I, I, Instagram is my favorite, then Facebook, and then that's it, WhatsApp. But before we get to your handles, okay, um, there's, there's two questions I wanna ask you for the people, because I know already one question, uh, the, the answer to one question, sorry. And that you've got an accent. You're not like me with my my British. 
girl, you know what I'm saying? You, you, where are you from? Where, where are you from? South London, babe. No, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, real talk. Born and raised in Los Angeles. I am birthed in Inglewood, California. And so I migrated my home here, well, it's been 11 years. And you know what's funny about that? Um, if you're into numbers, so I, it's been 11 years since I've been in this country. Right now, I'm in a one energy. And on my birthday, it was the master number. It added up to the master number 11. And I was like, what's this meant to happen? <laughs> mm, girl, alignment. Align. Jeez. <laughs> okay. And because of what's been happening and, um, you know, I haven't really been as active on my socials everything's thrown me off a little bit when it comes to you know my events and my jobs and whatever um so for me it's just you know i've taken a bit of time out to try and find that balance still trying to even find that balance and get myself back onto like a new routine you know what i'm saying um but covid corona coronavirus i can't <laughs> I can't say it like um, <laughs> how how have you what's this bit what has this experience been like for you? And to those that still may be finding this experience difficult, do you have any advice for them? Yes, of course. You know what? This experience. Um, let me let me turn up my volume. <laughs> um, yes, of course. You know what? This experience. I'm, I'm gonna give it to you in two different ways. Okay. So the first way is I'll say how it's impacted me. First of all, it's the best thing that ever happened to me because I feel like the universe toured me. And what I mean by that is I'm not talking about the virus impacting people's health. No, because that saddens my heart um, in relation to that and what's going mm. on that way. I don't wish <clears throat> beautiful souls to have to be in a position to where they're unwell or they're losing life. That's first and foremost. However, what I've seen in terms of what I mean by it's been the best thing ever happened to me is because, like I said before, I'm quite busy. And, you know, like so many of you beautiful souls out there, I didn't know how to slow down a little bit. You know, I always say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And don't get me wrong, I do a lot of things simultaneously. But what this COVID-19 lockdown has done is allowed me to rest mm. my work. Because see, what we didn't realize is that to get dressed, to go to the commute, to get to work, to then go see this, to go to that event, to do you don't have any real time to manifest your dreams into reality. You have no real time to get back to self-love, to self-care, to do the things that actually matter to you. So in this time, in a short time, you know, um, I have pretty much been able to self-reflect. I have been able to recharge, like starting from tomorrow, I'm going to be on a silent retreat. Now, I know some people are thinking, silent retreat, where go? In my house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, you know, someone is saying, well, what does that mean? Well, for me, I'm, I'm further recharging and resetting. So I'm going to be on a silent retreat, but I'm, I'm also going to be fasting. So I'm going to be doing a water fast because I'm setting my intention. So I'll be doing my prayers and my meditation to help keep me in alignment and prepare me for what is to come. Because I know it's about to go like this, to go straight up. So you have to prepare your body. You know, so for me, that's what I've been doing when I think that it's been good for me. My clients and um, some other people have been feeding back in terms of how they've been feeling. I can acknowledge that it has, for some people, it, it has impacted them in a way to where it's affected them. You know, I'm not going to go as far as saying like, you know, people are having mental health issues, but it is, a, you know, it's an environmental stressor that is like, whoa, what do you mean? Getting a hug to somebody is a big deal. You have six hugs a day and it improves your mood. You understand what I mean? Mm. So you go from a cult to being able to have that connection and you step outside and outside now feels weird, of course, it's starting to impact people. And so some strategies that I've been telling to tell my clients and um, even the people that come to Wednesday Night Calm, the whole purpose of Wednesday Night Calm is to give 
people, the platform that have somewhere to go to kind of help them with the healing as well. And then being on platforms like yourself to where you, you can interact. Yes, it is a Zoom setting. However, you see other people smile. You can, you, you're can you now connecting energetically. It feels different. Something is happening magically. And you're like, oh, okay, I'm okay. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. It's taking the time for yourself to do those things. You know, I always suggest, I, I'm not going to say go and meditate. Meditation is not necessarily for everybody. But what I will say is that if you're standing in meditation, if you just sit down, you know, like in lotus pose and meditate, that will probably not be for you. But meditation could be you, you know, just observing, you know, you light an incense and you observe the smoke. Or, you know, you just focus on your breath or you just stare outside at the at the tree and you something happens to where it slows you down and your mind becomes clear. So yeah. you know, I think it's first and foremost is, is bringing yourself to a place of calm and finding those strategies because when we're stressed and our brain goes like this and it's, you know, it becomes kind of like this, this manic and, you know, and if you're watching all of the news constantly, that's a no, no, that's a frequency. That's energy. I'm not saying don't check the news to know what's going on. But what I am saying is that when you see so many things that have a vibration that feels negative, you know, um, and I'm not saying getting information is negative. What I'm saying is, is that when it becomes fear-based and, and, and you see so much of it, so you saw it on the TV and then your friend told you about it, then your friend's friend sent something, somebody sent something to WhatsApp, then you turn on your computer and it, it's coming in in so many angles, it's going to naturally make someone kind of just deflate. You see what I mean? Yeah. So I'm just recommending to people just check in to see what's going on in the world, you know, but then pull back, have detoxes from the whole social media. It's important. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much. And thank you for your time. You're welcome. You're welcome. You know, guys, if you want to catch tea, you know, you can join um, her Wednesday night meditations. Um, and you can also come in and converse. Come and talk. If you're a lady, this is for the ladies, yeah? <laughs> Me and that now. You're going to be... <laughs> You can come and you can talk with us. I feel a bit bad because I'm leaving that with guys. But maybe... You know, in time, who knows? Who knows? Um, Teak, how can people find you? What are your social media handles or your website um, so that I can put it on the description? Yeah, so people can find me at spiritualteak.com. That's my website. Um, then people can email me, info at spiritualteak.com. People can go to Instagram and um spiritual teak <laughs> um i set up a facebook page uh on um the business page for spiritual teak or i'm starting a youtube so i got one video up there from like last year when i was starting um i fixed the banner now so i'm getting better i'm getting there so anyway yeah. you know, same thing. <laughs> okay so uh, if anyone types in spiritual teak on anything basically we're gonna find you because there's only one spiritual teak. only one in the, entire, <laughs> in the entire world. It was, it was waiting for me, okay? <laughs> okay, thank you so much. And um, guys, I'm going to say to make sure you don't miss out on future interviews because I'm back, yeah? You need to subscribe. You need to like and you need to share, yeah? And please, if you enjoyed this interview and even if you've got any questions um, that you would like to put I mean, like you'd like to add, you can put it in the comment box below. Okay, thank you. And until next time, peace. Subscribe, turn on your notification bell, tell a friend to tell a friend, share it, like it, and all of these things. Follow the links below. And until next time, peace and blessings to you.